Good morning. Uh, if you're visiting with us here at St. John's, we welcome you and glad you're worshiping with us. And uh, please see one of our greeters and ushers at the end of the service. We have a bag of, full of uh, goodies and information. And we're glad you're with us here today. Now, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Christians that we must contend with powers greater than ourselves and testifies to the full armor God gives us for the struggle. A reading of Paul to the Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you might be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. <clears throat> for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. And pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. And pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in Him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in Him. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears and eyes are open to the cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in Him. Many are the 
troubles all the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe. And who was the one that would betray him? And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord.
Apprehend God in all things, for God is in all things. Every single creature is filled with God and is a book about God. Amen. Amen. So this week, back to school. How many of you guys participated in back to school? Thank you for helping out. Thank you. <laughs> so if you went on Facebook, I mean, some of you back to school, it's like, wow, big deal. But if, you, but if you go on Facebook, it is a big deal. It's like, I mean, there's hundreds of posts about all ages of back to school, from the first time that someone's gone to school all the way up through college. Back to school is a big deal, right? So I was taking Cindy to work. She, Cindy works out at the Episcopal School of Knoxville. For those of you who don't know Cindy, she's my wife. Um, not just some random person. <laughs> so I was taking, I was taking her to, to the Episcopal school, I dropped her off, and I was in that carpool line, and I was sitting behind a mom who had just let off two little kids. One uh, was a girl, and she looked like she was, you know, second, third grade, something like that. She looked like she knew what she was doing. But then the other one was one of the, a little boy. And he, he looked, God, he looked like he was like three or something like that. I don't know. He was little, little. You know, one of those kids where the backpack is as big as he is you know so he's walking along <laughs> like stru struggling along with this backpack and uh, the mom is just sitting there watching I was watching her watch them you know and her face is just beaming and it's kind of almost like it's her eyes were glistening a little like she was kind of sad and she walked and watch him walk all the way up to the front door and then they went in and I swear to you she went yes <laughs> 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 it's a, it was like, yeah! She popped a bottle of champagne. <laughs> oh, man. And that's back to school, right? It's that mix. It's that mixed feeling. It's that mixed emotion. The, the, their sadness mixed with kind of a, thank goodness they're back in school feeling, right? Because back to school is a, is a, it's a big deal. It's another year. It's a marker. It's a, uh, you tell me. It's, it's a, the reality that we're all growing older in a good way. And I wonder, you know, what do we hope for, for our children, for ourselves, in these times of marking? What are we hoping for as we watch our kids go back to school? What do we want for them? What do we want for ourselves? And as I was thinking about all this, I, I was reminded of my very first, well, not my very first, but my most memorable back to school. And then this is, I've, I've talked about this a couple times, but it, because I realized as I was thinking on it, this has been a big event in my life. So I was 15, uh, sophomore year of high school, and I was, uh, uh, we moved. So we moved from a town called Jupiter, Florida, to a town called West Palm Beach, a little bigger city. And though it was only about 45 minutes down the road, it might as well have been halfway across the world, okay? So I want you to come back with me to 1980. 1980, some of you weren't even born. All right, 1980, and first day of school. Pull up with my dad, which was mistake number one. Uh, <laughs> don't do that. Uh, uh, I get out, and I'm, I'm dressed in typical kind of uh, Jupiter, Florida, first day of school wear. So that is shorts, flip-flops, and the, and the standard surfer shirt, you know, surf shop shirt that had a surfing image on the back. So even if you didn't surf, people wore that, because that's what you did. So I also had a um, kind of a pad, a pencil, pen, my Scooby-Doo lunchbox. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to see if you were listening. I, I, didn't, I didn't really have a Scooby-Doo lunchbox at 15. Just want to see, just checking. And then I had, you know, that, that kind of typical 1980s feathered hair. Remember that? <laughs> I hear that's coming back. <laughs> so yeah, it was like that, 50, that 1980s Bee Gees look, you know. Um, uh, I had it blowed, I blow, you know, I wasn't like a, 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 um, 
a barbarian, so my hair was blow-dried, you know, and it's looking good. I thought. Uh, um, so then I walk into the school. I walk into the school. It's, it's got this outdoor part to it. And I walk in, and I notice right away that all the guys, their hair is buzz cut, short cropped hair. Oh no. So then I notice they all have on blue jeans, and they have on cowboy boots, and they have on those western style kind of farmery shirts. Uh, you know, like, like you could go hunting at the drop of a hat in any, <laughs> in any moment. <laughs> And there's just trucks everywhere, you know, truck. And, uh, and, and I'm thinking, you know that Sesame Street song, One of These Things is Not Like the Other? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's me, right? One of these things, oh man, I was not like them. They were not like me. And the reason that this 15-year-old year was so tough was just because of that. It was the first time in my life where I really, truly felt different. You know, I was not like everybody else. I was like, I thought, everybody else in Jupiter. I was not like everybody else in West Palm Beach. And that was a hard feeling for a 15-year-old boy. I felt odd. I felt out of place. I felt like there was something wrong with me. Did you ever feel like that? Well, even if you don't think you have, I think you have. Because we can feel, you might not feel that way for those reasons. But everybody has felt different at some point. Be it you're at a social event and everybody's happy and having a good time and you're putting on your game face, but underneath you feel a lot of grief because someone you love is sick or struggling. You know what I mean? Or as simple as you have a new baby and all your friends want you to go out and you can't. So, so your life is starting to shift. It's starting to change. And in that, feel, that place is that feeling of difference. I'm different than I used to be. I'm different than the people who I'm around. Can you, I really want you to get the feeling, so I hope you can feel that. Even you thinkers, I hope you can feel that. All right? So I'm feeling different. I'm feeling one of these things does not belong, and it is me. So I thought, well, how do I fit in, right? You've got to try to fit in. You gotta, I mean, you know, right? Don't you? So I um, wasn't going to cut my hair. Not going to do it. Nope, nope, nope. Wasn't going to wear cowboy boots. Can't do that. Nope. I could go with the jeans sometimes but not enough. I gotta wear shorts. So I thought, you know, one other thing everybody does is they chew tobacco. <laughs> so yeah, let's do that. <laughs> let's go there, right? That looks simple. Not, you know, no skill involved with that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So they chew tobacco, and a lot of people chew tobacco in class. And they, they must, you know, they were like this, yeah, I don't know what, man. They, they were just amazing with this. So this one guy had like, he had like a department store of tobacco. And he was very kind. He was, I don't know why he had that many, but he had a lot. And it was from, one end was like a step above double mint, you know, step above bubble gum. It was, it kind of had a little spearminty taste. And then at the other end was Copenhagen. You ever, you ever hear, don't go there, man. I mean, so, so I, um, I went with this end, you know. Um, and I put it in. He told me what to do. He's a nice guy. I put it in. We went to our driver's ed class. I'm sitting there in driver's ed class. And, hey, this is cool. Kind of nice feeling. Stuff's happening in my mouth. <laughs> a lot of stuff is starting to happen in my mouth. And it's like, what do you do with this stuff? <laughs> did, did you ever swallow that stuff? <laughs> Never swallow that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, um, so the only thing I could do is just head out the door. 
So, today's gospel, Peter says to Jesus, you have the words of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. You have the words that give life meaning. You have the words of life. And I think, what would these words be to that 15-year-old boy puking outside of his driver's ed class? What would those words be? Because, see, the things about the words of eternal life is that they come to us within the context of our lives. Or they're not eternal, they're not words of eternal life. They're words that have no meaning if they do not come to us where we live our lives. So what would the words be to that 15-year-old kid? And I think they'd be this. And this comes from me straight out of the gospel. So do you feel different from everyone else? Well, that's normal. Because everyone feels different sometimes. People are different. That's true. That's good. That's right. That's what makes the world interesting. And those differences, those are gifts from God. I think he'd say, remember that you're made in the image of God and that you're good and that you're loved and that you just need to worry about being you. Be you because the world needs you to be you. You know, I'm 51 now. And I still need to hear those words. They still are words of eternal life for me. I hope they are for you. That's why I really, really, and I'm going to brag on St. John's for a minute here. That's why I I love and I'm proud to be a part of St. John's. Because I feel like week after week, in a wide variety of ways, through Jason, EJ, the choir, and the beautiful music, through our liturgy, through the very different ways that each of us preach. And through Skip Church, it's going on downstairs right now where Carrie Ruff is planting those seeds in our children, planting the seeds that you are made in the image of God. You are good. You are loved. The world needs you to be you. She's doing that right now. That's why I'm proud of here because that's a consistent message. And they're words that give me eternal life. I hope that, once again, I hope they do you. And I think it's best summed up by the prayer that John uses right before he preaches every, every time. And I know you've heard these words, so there's a danger that you're going to shut off right now. But don't. Listen to these words. Hopefully, they'll, they'll be words that give you life, that give you meaning, that help you to see you belong to God. Go where your best prayers take you. Unclench the fists of your spirit and take it easy. Breathe deeply of the glad air and live one day at a time. Know that you are precious and learn to trust. Amen.
For the prayers of the people, we will use Form 6, beginning on page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are gone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friends of the For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who reign of us and all who seek the For Catherine, our presiding bishop, Michael, our bishop, presiding bishop-elect, and George, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Today we pray especially for Dan Bentrup, Lon Brown, Tony DeValentin, Trudy Gardner, Eric Harrelson, the Reverend Peter Keese, Jerry Owenby, the very Reverend Jim Sanders, Teresa Smith, Francis Seiler, Nancy Stiefel, Bob Strickland, John Walker, Charles Dunbar, Albert Johnson, Jessica Knapp, Russell Laster. Are there others? And we also offer prayers for those who are serving our country in the military, especially those deployed in Afghanistan and Syria as we pray for the civilians of Afghanistan and for all victims of war. We also pray for the peoples of the Holy Land as we pray for all people who are being persecuted and displaced because of their faith. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Today we offer thanksgivings for the work in the ministry of St. John's Newborn Ministry, for the work in the ministry of St. Barnabas in Jefferson City, for the marriage of Christopher O'Connor and Maggie Carruth, for the flowers in the chapel given to the glory of God, and in thanksgivings for the St. John's family, and for the flowers in the church given in the memory of Harry Wesley Stowers, Ava Eugene Stowers, and Mary Berkeley, and Jennings Weiss Hobson. Are there other thanksgivings? We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise we pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Today we pray especially for Curtis Hale, Nancy Ryan Craig. Are there others? Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. I just bring your attention to uh, the one announcement on the back of the order of service. Uh, Jason's starting a new treble choir for second graders and up, and if you're interested, please uh, contact Jason. His contact information is right here. Um, another thing today is kind of a big day for the Hammond family. Rose, will you come out here? This is Rose's first time as an acolyte. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rose. <laughs> and then her little sister, Zinnia, is receiving her first communion today. So please raise them up in your prayers. <laughs> Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Great Thanksgiving continues on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven,
in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. One body are we, alleluia, for though many we share one bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Again, if you're visiting or a guest with us this morning, we're so grateful that you're here and we hope you will avail yourselves of the goodie bags at the back. There's a lot of good stuff in there. And now let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.